Welcome back to another episode of Back to Basics with Eric. In this video, we're gonna talk about weight and pressure with the violin bow and how to produce a nice sound. Stick around, you don't want to miss this. Hi there, my name is Eric. If we're meeting for the first time, welcome to this series Back to Basics with Eric. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notifications, and also like the video if you haven't done so already. That helps me as a content creator to provide more videos for you. So I wanna to get to the bottom of this. Weight is different than pressure. And you might have a violin teacher that clearly distinguishes the two because typically what you want is more weight of the right arm to help produce the sound as organically as possible. When you apply pressure, that means you're actively applying pressure to create a sound that's actually not as efficient as you might think. You typically want more weight, unless the music calls for it, of course. If the music calls or if the composer calls for having uh, more pressure or having like a very specific sound, then, then by all means, you know, follow the composer's instructions. But most of the time, you're gonna find that you're gonna try applying more weight on your arm than you will adding pressure. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, again, we want to use the natural weight of our arm. And some teachers like to keep the elbow up, some teachers like to keep the elbow down. I actually used to be one of the teachers that keeps the elbow up just so that way I can teach my students how to have a straight have a straight uh, bow. But as a matter of fact, I had a, I had a wonderful conversation with a colleague from uh, Peru. She actually convinced me in some way or actually introduced me that this is the reason why to have the elbow down as a beginner. So you are applying more weight to the bow and you're teaching the student how to get a very natural sound with a lot of tone. So shout out to Cecilia for giving me this advice. So applying weight. We want to use the natural weight of our arm and the natural weight of our hand to pull the sound. And notice how I said the word pull. We don't wanna press on top of the string. We wanna make sure we pull from the side of the string. If you really think about it, the string is kinda of like a circle. And you, we wanna pull that string. And we wanna make sure that if we push down or also press, if we press down, we're gonna get this really um, harsh, aggressive sound, and that's what we don't want, um, again, unless the composer asks for it. Keep in mind that you also want to have a good bow hold as you're trying to attempt pulling the sound to get the natural weight, and I'm going to leave a card up here for my latest tutorial on how to hold a violin bow. Now, going back to the weight, we want to use the natural weight, not just our elbow, it's actually our entire shoulder. and. I actually learned this from many violas. I have a lot of viola friends. Um, I know, shocker. I have a lot of viola friends who emphasize that using a shoulder, using your shoulder actually helps them get a sound, pull the sound. They're always talking about pulling the sound, never pressing, because viola strings are a lot thicker. You know, you have the A, D, G, and C strings instead of the E, A, D, and G. So as we're going on this journey of applying this weight to our uh, to our sound, to our bow, and to onto the strings, you also want to make sure that the elbow height is actually in the correct position. So you may notice right here, if you can see, that I have this curvature with my elbow, and I'm going this way, and I'm actually using the natural motion of my body. Um, using the shoulder uh, shoulder socket going downwards and into a circular motion. So using open strings for this exercise is a wonderful idea. I highly recommend it just because you're isolating one thing and if you apply fingers in a, in a piece of music and trying to apply the weight, you might be um, changing too many variables at once. So I suggest that you try just getting a nice sound. You may notice that a nice resonant ringing sound that helps fill your room or even fills your household 
And that is the best way to kind of really understand what the violin is expecting from you and how you can really maximize the sound and the tone of your instrument. So there you have it. That's how you apply weight onto your violin bow so that way you get a nice, healthy, organic sound. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notifications, and again, hit the like button so that way you get more content from me and you also get notified from when these videos come out. In the next video, we're gonna talk about bow speed and why it matters in your music.